So this, clearly, it's a peacock feather and my neighbour keeps peacocks. Now in terms of the noise they make, they're ugly birds, but in terms of how they look, I mean the males are stunning with these things and of course that's what this feather is for, it's for display purposes. But feathers come in all shapes and sizes and do many different things and when we think of a feather, at least when I think of a feather, I think of aerodynamics and flight. And when you're looking for inspiration, of course, nature is a great place to look. And looking at things like spinning jennies, the tubercles on the fins of whales, the barbs on the hooks of owls, there are just inspirations absolutely everywhere. And of course, the feather, or at least the flight feather, can be an inspiration for a wind turbine blade. Now, if you're looking for that kind of thing, it's astonishing what you can find. The US Department of Fisheries keeps what they call a feather atlas, where you can actually get the different shapes of different feathers from different birds across the US. Why they would do such a thing, I don't really know. But as a resource, it is actually available, and it's astonishing what's available when you look. And of course, I was thinking about wind turbine blades and feathers, and whether the aerodynamics of a feather would do anything in a wind turbine blade. And of course, the thing I have to do now when I think of such a thing, because it's me, is I have to make that. And the question is, how do you go about turning a feather into a wind turbine blade? Right, to do this, of course, we're going to use FreeCAD. And I've got a new FreeCAD file open. And the first thing to do is to create a body. So click on Create Body, and there it is. We're done. Now we need to bring our image in. And, of course, the image is going to be got from somewhere on the web, in my case. And here is the surface of two duck feathers from that atlas that I was talking about earlier. So we can click on that and save the image as a JPEG file. Once we've saved the image as a JPEG file to wherever we want it to, we can bring it into FreeCAD. To bring it into FreeCAD, File and Import. Now, there used to be something called the Image Workbench. This was in earlier versions. It's now gone, and we can use this to do everything. Click on the image file you just collected. Click on Open. And hey, presto, let's have a look at the top. We've got our image. Now, this image, unfortunately, is black, and so it's going to be hard to see. So click on there. And if we're on the actual image, we can see that it's been loaded as an image file. If we view this, then we can see that we've got a transparency there. Change that transparency to 75. That'll make it very transparent so we can actually see through it. Now, because it's a new file, we're on part design, and we have loaded this up from previous videos. So click on the Curves workbench, and that's the workbench that we're going to be using. And there we go. Now, what we want is freehand B spline, which is right there. Click on the freehand B spline, and this will appear. And we can drag and drop those points to go around that feather. So grab the point and just move it up to where you want it to be, somewhere like there, for instance. The midpoint can go, oh, let's say, right over there. And this point is going to go at the beginning of the feather. Now, you can see that we've got this blue line here. If we click on that blue line and press I on the keyboard, it enters another control point, which we then can then position. So if we position that down there and we keep on going, what we can actually do is create a curve that is the outline of this feather. Now, this can be used on anything, obviously. I'm doing a feather, but if you want to do anything else that you've taken an image of that you pull in, then you do exactly the same sort of stuff in order to be able to draw around any image you want. When we keep on doing that, clicking on the spline line and then hitting I to get as many of these points as we actually need to create our curve. Once we're happy with our curve, there we go, then we can carry on curving round the rest of the feather until we've basically drawn the outline of the feather. I've drawn the two sides of the feather and I've drawn a centre line. Well, it's not centre, it's off centre where the quill actually runs. Once we've done that, if we hide the picture, we can see that we've got our feather image drawn. So for the second part of this, of course, what I want to do is bend that feather shape into an air four, and I could bend the shape. Equally, however, I could choose an NACA airfoil to copy that airfoil shape onto the feather shape. So I did exactly the same thing. 
chosen an ACA form, imported it into a free CAD, and drew around it with two B splines. So here is the airfoil I chose, and of course I put a couple of B splines around it. And then if we hide the airfoil, we can see that the curve have actually drawn. Now this is two curves. If you look here, you'll see there's a gap between them. And there's also a gap between them here and here. We'll deal with that later. But the thing about B splines is they're a bit of a pain, in fact, because they will pick up underlying geometry. But when I've got the image selected, and I go down to here on the view tab, selectable can be true or false. I've set it to false. So the image can't be selected and that makes it an awful lot easier to handle B splines. So I've zoomed in on that small gap we were talking about. If we go to the end of the curve here, you'll see the curve point. Select it and press down the control key and select the other point there. Then here we've got parametric line, click the line, and it will draw the line between the two, closing that gap. Then we click on that line, click on the curve, and here we've got join curves. Click on that, and it'll make it one curve. And if we repeat that process by clicking on the join curve with the unjoined curve, and join it again. So now we've got one complete curve. It's obviously too big because there's the NACA airfoil, there's the feather. What we need to do is scale it. And to do that, hit scale. Choose your scale. In my case, 0 0.05. I want to make it tiny. Apply it. And you can see it's more or less the right size. Right, it's clearly in the wrong position. So I highlight it. And if you have a look at data, you'll see placement. Just got a down arrow. Click the down arrow. And then we've got position. Click the down arrow. And we want to move that along the x-axis. Let's say 9.9. .9. We move it 9.9, .9, then there is our airfoil positioned nicely in the feather. So clearly, our airfoil is in the wrong orientation. We're looking at the top. If we look at the front, we'll see it's actually flat. It's on the same plane as the feather, which is a bit of a pain because it doesn't have an associated sketch. However, if we highlight it, go to Edit and Placement, we'll get this box here. What we need to do is change the active axis. At the moment, it's Z, so it's X, Y, Z. If we change the axis there to 1 and the axis on Z to 0, then our X axis becomes the axis about which it will rotate. And we want to rotate it about the X axis 90 degrees, and we can apply that, and OK. And we'll notice it's now viewed as a single line from the top. And if we rotate it around, we can see we've got it where we want it to be, that is, in the middle, in the right orientation of the feather. Of course, the feather only looks like it's in the right place, but the feather itself needs rotating. So we do exactly the same thing, but this time rotate the feather by 8 degrees. So you see it's 8 degrees off horizontal, and it lies nicely now on that NACA airfoil that we created. And so we've got our drawing of the feather in an airfoil shape. OK, that was a fair bit of tedious mucking about to get here, but we've got our shape and the next bit is actually magical. I think the whole thing's worth it just for the next bit. Now, we've been on the Curves workbench for quite a while. What we need to do is change to the Curved Shapes workbench. Now, this is another workbench that you probably don't have installed, and you should uh, install it using the Add-ons Manager that you can find under Tools. There it is, Add-on Manager, and just hunt for Curved Shapes Workbench. This one works mm, in order. You have to do things in order. So the first thing to do is to select the shape you want to extrude. And of course, in this case, it's our airfoil. Hold down the key and then sh uh, select the shape. Remember, we went to the trouble of making this two curves. Select the shape that you want to extrude to. Second. And then it'll extrude this airfoil along this curve here, or rather along our feather. And all we do is hit that. Now, magically, you don't see anything, which is not very good. But click Curved Array and have a look under here. Under Data, what you'll see is Solid set to False. You need to set that to True. 
set it to true and then recalculate with this button here, the refresh button, and the solid will appear. There it is. Now, it's not very good in following these lines, and that's because of the number of items. What it's done is created four little slices through here and approximated to those slices, and it's not giving a true value. We need to increase that. If we increase that to, say, something like 15, then we can see it's got a much better following than it had before. Let's make sure that is 15. There we go. And it follows it much better. And we can spin that round and have a look at it a little bit to see where we are with it. And we can increase that some more if we want. Let's try 25. Oh, that's so cool. Look at that. And after we print it out, there it is. Now it's clearly a little bit too small, but we've already done scale down, and scale up is just the reverse of that. Highlight the whole thing, click on scale, scale up. And clearly I need two more in order to actually make a wind turbine out of this. But that idea of being able to take a real life feather, draw around it, and create this wind turbine blade, I thought was kind of cute. And I have no idea how it will perform, but I also think it's kind of interesting because we can give that a go and see if our bird feathered wind turbine is going to do something really interesting. I mean, I hope it does. I don't know if it will do, but we'll soon find out. Now, I wanted to go through all of that because when you look at FreeCAD, you tend to think only really of geometric drawings, but using the curves workbench and the curve shape workbench, making these much more organic shapes actually isn't that difficult at all. It's quite a beautiful thing. The curves are really nice and I'm quite pleased with it. So I hope the video is useful to people. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.